Before we get started, I just kind of wanted to um, welcome those that I haven't told yet. Welcome you into the new year, if I'm seeing you for the first time this year. There's a lot of things that I want to cover today. And I want to cover some things because we are fasting and praying. And God is moving in this fasting and praying season for us. There's a lot of churches that are fasting and praying as well. So I thank God that everybody, those that understand the need for fasting and praying. And fasting and praying is about giving God the first, the firstling of the year so that your year can be blessed. Hallelujah. And not cursed. Amen throughout the year and that's what fasting and praying the first of the year is all about giving up something for God Amen. and the revelation that we received of course this year for the church is the discernment and the understanding of times I'll be covering that a little bit as we get into the sermon as well as the fact that we're God had revelated to us about the word fast in terms of when you're fasting it's part of your words it's the word spoken in you, not only you speaking it, but it dwelling in your heart. David said, I meditate on the word day and night. Notice when you're meditating on the word, because you can get very distracted in your fasting and praying. The devil will come and tell you to eat. The devil will tell you that you can't make it. But if you begin to speak things like the Lord is my strength, come on somebody, then God can begin to move. Notice your words. Amen. Jesus had to speak the word to the devil to get him to leave him alone, amen. When he took, amen, come on, when the Holy Spirit took Jesus on the high place, the enemy came and tempted him, but Jesus spoke what? The word, amen. It was, he was not only fasting and praying, but he had to speak what? The word, amen. So this is what the word fast is all about. So everybody say the word fast dot com. Hallelujah. And if you are not familiar with it, you need to go there so we can all revelate to you and speak to your mind and your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. There's been a lot of reviews that we've received about it. And I thank God that it's blessing not only our church and our people, but other churches, amen, and other people. We thank God for what he's doing, amen. So please go out, take a look, amen, and see God bless you in this. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. So without any further ado, let's go to the Word of God. Amen. So go with me quickly to Ecclesiastics. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastics 5, verse, and we're going to take off at verse 1. Hallelujah. And what this talks about, again, we're talking about the discernment and understanding of times. And this is, this, if I had to title this particular message, I would title it Discerning the Fast. Understanding what you have to do in the fast. Because how many know it's not easy to fast? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Sometimes you can be fasting and drinking juice and you start smelling things like chicken and stuff like that. It, it happened to anybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> One time I, I was like so weak, amen. I started smelling steak and baked potato. I said, oh, Lord, I provide you up, devil, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I can do this thing, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I know the end results of it all. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that's what we're going to be talking about, discerning the fast. Hallelujah. Now, if you look at Ecclesiastics with me, and we're going to, I'm going to ask you, we're going to do about four things. We're going to address about four areas, and that was going to be in terms of your word, what, what to say and how to say it and do it right the first time. Come on, somebody. Or I should say do it right do it, do it, do it at the right time. There it is. That's a better time. Because sometimes doing it at the first time is not the right time. Amen. So let me, let me, let me get that again. Now, what to say? Come on, somebody. End this fast. This is discerning the fast. What to say? Because when you get weak, you gotta say, "Oh, though I'm weak, the Lord thy God is strong." Come on, somebody. You can't say, "Oh God, I can't make it." Oh, you just cursed yourself. The devil said, oh, they can't make it, Lord. Let me send them some meat. Come on. Let me have a Sister Lulabelle call them and invite them out to a nice dinner on me. Come on. Come on, somebody. you got to understand the enemy knows how to get you. 
Oh, somebody, you can go to your aunt's house and she'll have the best meal, stuff that you like, and there you are fasting. Then what to say? What are you going to say? Amen. Then how are you going to handle this particular situation? What words are you going to use? Are you going to tell them you're fasting? I think not. You're going to say something like, thank you so much. No, thank you. But I can take it with me because I've got things I need to take care of. Amen. Do you see how easy that is? You have not told a lie. Wrap that good meal up, put it in aluminum ball, take it home, put it in the freezer. <laughs> and when February comes, you crack that bag for open and microwave it and take care of business. <laughs> Come on, somebody. This is what to say and how to say it. And notice you haven't hurt, you haven't hurt anybody's feelings. You loved on them. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And take you to heaven, somebody. So let them know how good it was. But you don't eat. Mm. Drink you some water. Amen. Come on. Or say, Grandmama, do you got some juice? Hey, come on, somebody. See, we're fasting and praying, so you have to know what to do, amen, and how to do it at the you have to do the right thing, the right thing at the right time. Amen. Hallelujah. There you go. Somebody spoke it. Wisdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Because that's what the word fast is. Notice your words. How they line up with your fast. Ecclesiastics. And this talks about, notice, and I got this from the book on page 19 of the word fast book. Amen. Page 19. I got this from there. So just kind of wanted to give you a little inclination. But notice Ecclesiastics 5. Look at what it says. And this is fulfilling your vows. Fulfilling your vows. Now, if you've committed to God that you were going to fast. Mm, come on, somebody. Amen. You told God. You, it ain't about telling us in the church and pastor and all that stuff. You told God that you were going to fast. You didn't have to tell me because it ain't going to make me a hill of angels because I'm going to keep right on going. Amen. Hallelujah. But what you have to do is be true to yourself and true to God. Because God sees, I can't see that. Fuck, come on, somebody. And God, even though I may be a, a prophet, and, I, and, I, and, I, and my wife and I, we're prophetic, amen. This is a prophetic ministry, and this is a prophetic season. God only going to show me so much. Come on, somebody. God shows us in parts about you and your life. Come on, God shows us in this ministry in part. Why? If God showed us everything, we'd be like Enoch. We'd be gone. God showed Enoch every. He showed him the heavens, and he said, come on, boy, it's time to leave. You know too much. Come on, somebody. Amen. It's real. So God is wanting you to be a discernment and an understanding of time. Discernment allows you to keep you out of trouble. Notice how we handle a situation when somebody offered us a wonderful meal. Come on, somebody. Amen. Even if they take you out to the restaurant, you know how to eat a salad. If they just want to buy you a big meal, get it to go. Come on, somebody. You don't have to eat. You can use wisdom. Amen. Come on, somebody. So we want to know how to say it, what to say, do the right thing at the right time. <clears throat> so Ecclesiastes 5 and 1 says, this is fulfilling your vow to God. See, you're being honest to God. You're keeping your vow to God. And when you do that to God, that's when you really honor your vow. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something about this vow to God. It's very serious. I'll quickly tell you this story, then we'll get right into it. But this is where I've told this before. I'll tell you how serious a vow is to God. And then I'm going to show it to you in the scripture. Amen. In the book of Judges, there was a judge that was raised up by God and by the people of Israel. This particular judge, at the beginning of his life, he was shown that Israel went to get him because he was a, a leader, an excellent fighter. And I forget his name, but um, what happened is they went, Israel was losing the battles that they were fighting. And they were told about this young man who was, who was first of all, shown from the tribe of Israel, but Israel needed him because he, was, he could fight. And he could lead warriors. So they went to retrieve him. And they said, listen, if you will be king for us and lead us in the battle with victory, for we know your skills, we will give you, we will make you leader over us. 
And so he decided that he would take on this task. And so he went and prayed to the Almighty God. And he made a vow to God. He says, God, he says, if you would give me this battle. He says, if you would give me victory in these defeating the enemy. And you know, Israel's enemy was always very larger than they were. He said, if you would give me victory in this battle, in this enemy, I will sacrifice whatever comes to me at the end of the victory. Amen. The first thing that comes to me, I will sacrifice unto you, Lord. And he won. And at the battle, there was mighty celebration in all of this. And he was on his way back. They had lifted him up. He was feeling pretty great because he was now a great king, a great leader. And they were taking him back where he was going to lead Israel. But he had made a vow to God. And guess who? The first person met him on his way back. It was his daughter. This is in the text. This is in Judges. But he had made a vow. And he wept. He fell down on his knees and wept because he realized that he had told God. He says, God, whatever, whoever comes to me first, I will sacrifice unto you. And he told his daughter. And his daughter was very wise. She says, whatever the Lord says, do it. I noticed something about the children of children of Israel, they were real keen about whatever the Lord says, do it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Samuel had to tell Eli a few things that he was going to die and his family was going to be killed. And he told Eli, Eli made him tell him the, the prophecy and, and Eli said, well, whatever the Lord says, do it. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Do you understand? You might as well say do it because God's going to do it anyway. But at any rate, he had to sacrifice his daughter. She says, whatever. So he said, and so she says, well, give me some time. Let me go pray. And I'll go do this. Now, if that would have been me, I'd have said, whoa, Lord. I'd have been back up in prayer. I'd have been, I'd have been like Peter and David. I'd have started weeping. I said, oh, Lord, let me, let, let me get out of this one. Come on now. I at least tried it. I, I mean, come on, somebody. You know, if he just said, no, I was okay. But I done went back, but he didn't. He went ahead and they, they sacrificed his daughter. Jesus. The point that I'm making is a vow. If you make a vow to God, he holds you to that vow. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. See, I made a vow that I was going to be into this ministry thing. Oh, believe me, I, I wanted to get out a few times, especially when there's only just one chair in here and me and my wife. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. But nevertheless, hallelujah, God will always make a way. And then, and, and right after that, he, you know, God has a sense of humor about this stuff. Right after that, he'd fill the whole place up 200 feet. Come on. I, and I wouldn't understand it, somebody. But nevertheless, God has a sense of humor, but he doesn't play. But he'll hold you to the promises. Why? Because what he promises to you, he cannot lie. He cannot take it back. Whatever he said, he will do. His word, oh, somebody's, oh, hallelujah. I'm trying to get to the text. But his word, somebody say his word. His word. It cannot, it cannot return, return to him, to him. Void. void. When he sends it out, somebody, it will return what it set out to do. See, when your word, come on, little God, when your word go out, it shall return, amen, hallelujah, to you what it set out to do. Amen. That's why we're fasting. See, God can speak a thing inside of you now into your spirit, man, and you can receive it, oh, somebody. I'm telling you, oh, God, I'm telling you the truth. Let me get to the text, Holy Ghost, but I'm telling you the truth. On the, like, the seventh day of this fasting, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and it's like he says, you got your right mind back. Oh, God, somebody. Do you know somebody in the flesh you can lose your L11 mind? Hallelujah. You can get so bogged down on why this ain't happening, why that ain't happening. Can I get this? Can I get that? I go that? You don't know. But then God, the Holy Spirit say, you got your right mind back now, boy. Run with me. Hmm. 
shoot somebody. Oh, I woke up feeling like, oh, somebody, I could take on some things. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I could defeat some devils in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I could call on some mighty angels in the name of Jesus. Call somebody. This is a powerful time this time. My wife spoke a word, hallelujah, and told us, amen, this fast was going to be easy. Not only it's going to be easy, but it's going to be powerful because we're learning how to speak the word in it. Hallelujah. I'm going to share this. That's, I'm going to share this little statement. Uh, uh, dear sister shared something with my, with my wife, and, 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 and it came out like this. She said that, 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 that all they ever used to do is that when they fasted, was they would talk about when they're going to eat. Come on, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't helping nobody. <laughs> all you're doing is, is, is revving the devil up. Come on, hurry, hurry, hurry. I got, some, I got some stuff for you. And you ain't got no prayer in your life. You ain't seeking no God. All you worried about is the flesh. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastics 5, verse 1. We're talking about fulfilling your vow in this fast. Speaking the word of God. Notice, verse 1 says, God, your steps when you go to the house of God. That's the first thing. Guard your steps. Guard your steps when you go to the house of the Lord. Go, go, notice what it says. Go to listen. Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody. Somebody. Get ready. Rather than offer the sacrifices of fools. In other words, when you enter into the house of the Lord, you don't enter in opinionated. Come on, somebody. You don't enter in trying to, try, try, try to, trying to exert what you think you know. Uh, see, you, God don't want you coming to his house trying to exert or think what you know. He wants you to come in and hear what he has to tell you so that you can be revelated and win the battles that are set before you. See, some of us get lost in all of that. We think we got it, but we think we know something. And you don't know nothing. See, you don't know how to sit down and listen and learn. Amen. You want to try to, oh, I got a little word in me, Pastor. I know how to say it. I know how to do. I can do what you're doing. Oh, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, there's some folks, and they get lost. That's not what the word of God says. He says, touch not my prophet and do him no harm. So when you come into the house, he says, guard your steps. Mm -hmm. When you go to the house of God, go near in to listen rather than offer the sacrifices of fools. If you come in here arrogant and you don't want to hear what the word of the Lord is saying, or, or, or better yet, here you go. Oh, he was preaching that for you. Ah, somebody, I just broke a yoke. Oh, that word was for you. Mmm, somebody. Let me tell you something that, that, that we learned years ago, my wife and I. God spoke to us at the same time because one of us would have to, we'd go to church because one of us had to be there because we was in leadership, so if one went, that meant both of them was there. And she'd go and she'd say, oh, God, had that, well, you should have been there. That word was for you. I go to church, I said, oh, you should have been there. That word was for you. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And then God spoke to, us, spoke to both of us at the same time. We looked at each other. We knew it was God. And he said, whoever was there, that's who the word was for. Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody. Yeah. That broke a serious yoke. Because, yeah. see, you ain't pointing another finger. Come on. And the evil eye and the forward mouth, which God hates. Hallelujah. So guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer a sacrifice of food. Who do not, who do not know that they do wrong? See, you all arrogant thinking, oh, hallelujah. And you're sitting there thinking, oh, sister, sister Sully Bell should have been here. Brother So-and-so should have been here. He, oh, that word would have just got him. Oh, mm, my God. What about you? Why can't you be the first partaker? 
Lord. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Why can't you look at yourself in the mirror and receive what God has for you? Come on, what happened to the song, What God Has For Me Is For Me? Come on, song. What God Has For You Is For You. What happened to that? Why are you worried about, see, you looking to the left and to the right instead of looking to the heel from which coming your heel. Amen. See, this is, a, this is a, a fasting and praying. It's time to clean up some mess and start speaking the right so God can speak into your life and speak into your heart and bless you when you come out of this thing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I heard a sister say a Thursday night on the prayer, I was, I, I was on the prayer line, and one sister, well, a dear sister of ours, amen, and, and God spoke to her because she had to get the book because the first night she said, oh, this fast has been so hard. Every year I fast, and it's just so hard. Why is it so hard, Pastor? I said, no, you need to cut that foolishness out. I said, we buying that. This ain't no hard fast. God just broke a yoke on you. I said, now you go to the go go to the word word for word hallelujah the wordfast.com and get the book, get the guide because you need your your words is wrong. Yes. Yes. If you're speaking it, come on somebody, yes. whatever you speak, hallelujah. Mm. Whatever you the tongue, come on somebody, hallelujah. Your words, hallelujah. You need to understand. So a man speaking what? There's it's, it's, it's hard. So you got to speak right. So God can say, oh, that's my son. That's my daughter. I got to, oh, angels, get down there and bless that son and daughter right now. Get it done. See, they don't have it because you just spoke the word. The same word that created heaven and earth. Hallelujah. He says, look at verse 2. Do not be quick with your mouth. There it is. Oh, somebody. Do not be hasty in your heart. Hallelujah. To utter anything before God. Oh, somebody. See, he hears when you when even we're not around, God sees, hears your tongue moving. He knows your thoughts. Forget that foolishness, all that paganness about Santa Claus. No, when you're naughty and nice, that's a bunch of devil. But God, somebody, knows that stuff. He knows. The word says it right here. He says, do not be quick with your mouth. Mm -hmm. Do not be hasty in your heart. Mm -hmm. Do not utter anything before God. God is in where? Heaven. Mm -hmm. And you are where? On earth. Come on, somebody. And what did we say about the kingdom of God? This is why we pray, thy kingdom come where? To where? On earth. Where are we? On earth. And what are we walking around in? An earth suit. So God being what? The unseen. Hallelujah. Speaking to our unseen spirit so that we can be on the scene, walking on the scene, on this earth. Hallelujah. The terrestrial. Come on, come on somebody. Dirt. Hallelujah. Where he is in the celestial the heaven. Come on. So God says that he is above all things. He's in the kingdom of heaven and you're on the earth. But he hears and sees your mouth when it speaks. Why? Because he created it. Why? Because he breathed into it. So he knows you. That's why you have to speak right. Notice he says. God is in heaven. You are on earth. Uh-oh. Here it is. Here's what we're trying to get to right here. This is what I got out of the book. So let not your words, mm, so let your words be few. Mm. You know, there's a song that I love to sing. God of heaven, amen. You're awesome, you're great. Let my words be few. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll stand before you in awe, he says. Yes, but let my words be few. And the reason why your words have to be few. Oh, I don't care about you getting upset. So I don't care about somebody made you mad or stumped on your big toe. Come on, somebody. You better let your words be few. If you're worrying about your big toe, what about Jesus who got stabbed in the side with a sword? What about Jesus who got whooped 40 lashes until the blood and the skin peeled off? And you worried about a big toe? Come on, somebody. 
You can't forgive somebody for your big toe being stepped on? Jesus. Come on, somebody. So you need to, did Jesus utter any craziness? He said, oh God, but forgive them. Mm -hmm. For they know not what they do. Oh, somebody. Thank you, Lord. Oh, forgiveness is a powerful thing. <clears throat> when you let go and let God, your blessings get released from heaven. See, when you let the spirit of unforgiveness dwell in you, you block every blessing that God's trying to get to you. you got to let it go and let God. Notice what he says. And let your words be few. Notice what we're in, fasting and praying. Why is the word fast so important? Because you've got to learn how to speak aright. You've got to learn how to speak the right words at the right time. Come on, son. In the right way. <laughs> somebody, amen. I, I could close the book right there. Somebody ought to be ought to be set on go. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we we but God got a little bit more we want to tell you. Notice he says, for a dream come through the multitude of business. I'm in King James, but I like this because this is me. Notice. Dreams. Sister Teeland can relate to this one. For dreams, come on somebody, comes through a multitude of business dreams. Old man will dream dreams and young man will see visions. We know that scripture. But notice what God says in this scripture. For dreams comes through the multitude of business. When do you receive ideas to start some type of business? Come on, you entrepreneurs. When God began to what? Revelate to you in a dream and some type of vision. So God says here that for a dream coming through the multitude of that, the multitude of business, when you come up with something great that you're going to start or do, come on, somebody. God says, this is how it comes. If you go to bed praying righteous to God, he's going to speak to you. He's going to tell you some things, and you need to be ready. You need to be ready to get up, pray, and write the vision down. Though it tarry. Come on, somebody. It will surely come to pass. Oh, somebody just broke the door. Notice he says, for a dream coming through a multitude of business, and uh-oh, uh-oh, and a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. Oh, that's so true. In my former church, you know, everybody knew I owned a company. And I'd have these, for lack of a better word in the Bible, I have these fools coming up to me. I ain't calling nobody no fool, but I'm just saying what the words. But these fools, these spirits of fools would come up to me. And they say stuff like, oh, I, 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 I. my grandmama told me I, 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 uh, the pastor prophesied me to me about four or five years ago. I, I spoke have business. Well, if he prophesied you four or five years ago, why aren't you doing what you're tell in my face for? Telling me about what you were prophesied to do. Or I get another one. You know, I'm 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 gonna have a business. When we you know, I, I'm gonna have one. I, I, I'm supposed to get some money. I, I, I'm 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 gonna go to bank and, and you ain't done nothing. All you're doing is talking. Notice here the word says, and a fool's voice is known by the multitude of what words, talking loud and saying nothing. The word of God is true. It speaks volumes. It don't lie. Notice, and I'm sure, I would guarantee you, if you live long enough, you have had people come up to you and all they was is just talking, and you knew they were talking. You knew every time they opened their mouth, they was telling a lie. And all you could do is look at them. You need to dust the dust off your feet and don't go back that way no more. Say, God bless you. And, and, and I, I used to say, God bless you, brother. God bless your sister. But you, excuse me, I, 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 I've got something I need to take care of. See, these ways, notice I, I, thought I, I didn't hurt nobody's feelings. I didn't wound nobody. I didn't tell them that they wasn't or couldn't or all that stuff. I didn't do that. That's not my, that's not my response. That is not my job. It never is and never will be. I, you can never, no one, no one can ever tell a person what he can and cannot do. Because you are a king and a queen. You have no authority over individuals. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you need to always speak right towards somebody. Your words. 
You don't wound anybody. You always flow in love. Whether you believe that they can succeed or not, that is not your responsibility. Because they could be down one day and God can lift them up the next. They could be a janitor one day and a president the next. God is always about taking a nobody and or an anybody, raising them up and making them a somebody. Look at you. Come on. <laughs> See, you somebody today. Maybe a few years ago, you what you were just nobody. You felt like nobody. And then you had to step it up and become an anybody. And then you said, wait a minute, I ain't just anybody. I, I got to be a somebody. <laughs> but you know, you know, you've got to begin to motivate your mind and your spirit. And how do you do that? By speaking the right words. The Bible tells us in his scriptures, he's very clear. He says, when you make a vow, here's where I'm trying to get to. Notice this. When you make a vow to God, look at verse 4 because he's very serious about this. And I don't want you to take for one minute or think one minute. I don't want the devil to deceive you. So pastor said, no, pastor ain't said this. This is God. When, when look at verse 4, Ecclesiastes 5. When you make a vow to God, come on somebody, do not delay to pay it. Did, did, did you see the same thing I'm saying, Sister Wong? Hallelujah. Do you see it, Brother Keenan, in your Bible? I know you got one. Praise God, you need to get a Bible. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, Brother Max. He, you asked, and he didn't, he didn't stick his head up. Hallelujah. <laughs> he, he did. Brother Stevie, show him that scripture. <laughs> you brothers better get a Bible back there. <laughs> Pull an app. Yeah, look, pull an app up or something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because when they're doing this sword card cutting, I don't want you to bleed. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he says, when you make a vow to God, when you tell God, see, Keenan, you know. I got, to, I, got, I got to get you for this one. See, you know. You know when you say, God, Lord, I will do right. I will do whatever. I will be good. If you will, God, if you will do this for me, I promise I won't go back and do wrong again. Come on, somebody. Oh, oh there ain't nobody ever told God that. Amen. Amen. Oh, Brother Keenan, you ain't never told God if he gets you out of the situation. Now, he done brought you from over yonder and around the bend, and now you saying that you don't know what he's saying in his word? I don't mean to pick on you, son, but you need to understand that this word cuts to and fro, young and old. The voice and the word of God goes out, it will not return void. Whatever you say, young or old, God's going to hold you to the vow. And if you don't repay, guess what? He knows how to get you. He knows how to bring you down. He knows how to do some whooping. Come on! So don't make it, he says. Notice what he says. When you make a vow, do not delay to pay it. For he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you pay, pay what you have vowed. Better not to vow, come on somebody, better not to tell nobody you're going to do something and don't do it. Amen. Better not to vow than to vow and not pay. Amen. So don't sit here and say, oh, pastor, oh, I'm going to give the church. I thought I'd have a bit of a day. <laughs> you better keep that mouth closed. Because you walk out of here and don't do what you're told by all sides. Oh, man, come on, somebody. Oh, I'm breaking your yoke right now. Oh, there's a lot of folks to, ah, let me take, I guess give me, give, give, give me a little envelope, Pastor. I, I send it in. Oh. <laughs> and you don't see them no more. But it ain't us, it ain't me they got to worry about. And then guess what? Two months down the road, all this stuff jacked up. They got they, they 
getting eviction notices and, and all of a sudden uh, somebody or a bill collector calling them trying to run them down. And a cell phone get cut off. You call a cell phone. Uh, uh. Why? Because God's trying to let you know that if you vow, you better keep it. See, all this stuff is so real to God. Better not to vow than to vow and not pay it, he says. Suffer then not. And notice what it says. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Mm -hmm. Notice words. Neither say thou before the, uh-oh, the angel. See those angels? They all around. Them. We talked about them. They all around. There it is right there. I'm in the King James. He says, neither say thou before the angels that it was an error. Oh, somebody. <laughs> also, I got to break another yoke, y'all. I'm sorry, but it's fasting. It's praying. It's time to get cleansed. Yes. Hallelujah. If you want to start putting your numbers on, on, on the tie, take some time and put the right number on there. Come on, what the word? Come on, let me read the word again. Don't put the wrong number on the tie envelope for your credit card. Don't do that. God sees. He knows your heart and mind. I'm just trying to help you. I want you to be truly blessed. Do you understand what I'm saying? What is the word? We're fasting and praying. It's time to come clean. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. you can't go to God and you fasting and praying and going, God will owe somebody. You don't want stuff to jack you up because you you doing an error. Notice what the word says. Look what he says. Suffer not thy mouth to call thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy what? Hands. Now you got it. So don't get mad at pastor because the word cut me. Just do the right thing. Just do because you know why you want to do and say the right thing. Because if you do say the right thing, goodness and mercy, love and kindness and peace comes back to you. Prosperity. How do we get the sevenfold blessings? What is it? Financial abundance, double portion, come on somebody, miracles, come on somebody, uh, restoration, come on somebody, divine presence, why we're fasting? To get his divine presence in the place, in our heart, in our minds, in our house, so the evil spirit will leave, come on somebody, and our year will be prosper, come on somebody, the blessings upon our families, come on somebody, did you forget deliverance, how many need deliverance, totally set free, completely saved, come on, oh somebody, then, somebody say then, hallelujah, then the blessings of the Lord will make it you rich and add it you no sorrow. Because you're clean. God sees the heart. He just told us this. Angel sitting right there next to you right now. He know what you're going to do. That's why God said it there. To anticipate your every move. We need to be mindful of the Lord. For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there's also vanity. But fear the Lord. Everybody see that? Everybody see that? I know I'm not going to have time to finish this, but I think that was probably pretty good. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Hallelujah. So let's just go with Daniel real quick. Hallelujah. Real quick. Let me share something with you and Daniel. We talked about this over the new year. He says... Daniel chapter 2, since Daniel is the fasting guy for us, amen, he taught us how to do a Daniel fast, how to eat vegetables and no, no sweet stuff and all that stuff and still 
maintain our goodness and our mercy with God. And, you know, one of the things, I'm going to tell you something, but I'll tell you and share a story with you. Daniel was a eunuch. And for those that don't know what a eunuch is, I'm going to let you look it up. Because <laughs> I know the men don't want to hear about that. Come on. <laughs> but Daniel and the Hebrew boys, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, was eunuchs. They were made eunuchs in the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. And the reason why they were made eunuchs, Brother Max, because Hezekiah didn't leave when he was supposed to. Hezekiah, if you notice, was supposed to leave, but he asked God, pleaded with God for 15 more years. And after that, he lost his kingdom because he was supposed, he didn't leave when he was supposed to. After that, during that 15 years, he had seeds and they committed all kind of evilness in the sight of the Lord. Manasseh was his son and Manasseh was an evil, very evil king. In other words, in no telling what he produced, kind of like, Cain. And nevertheless, Hezekiah showed people. He showed his enemy everything in his house. Mm -hmm. And when he did that, the enemy came and took everything that belonged to him. Mm -hmm. And when he took everything that belonged to them, he took the possessions and the ornaments and the precious sacred things of God and the people of God, the prophets and all of those. And he, and, he, and he made those individual eunuchs. So look up eunuchs. And, but by them being eunuchs, the only thing they could do was seek God. Are you hearing me? Why? Because they didn't have distractions. Come on, man. Don't let me raise my right hand on that one. <laughs> I know we men, because we married men, we like distractions. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but anyway, that's what Daniel was. And so he sought God. Amen. Sought him with his whole heart. Let me tell you something. Fasting and praying is seeking God with our whole hearts. It's almost like becoming as a eunuch. Why? Because you're giving up everything for God. You're letting God know, God, I'm honoring you with this. I'm serious about you, God. And then all of a sudden, he speaks to you like he speaks to me or spoke to me. You got your right mind back. Call somebody. So many cares and distractions of the world can take away your mind, Amen. can drive you crazy, Again. can send you into a terrible spin. But God says, come to me and I will give you peace. Mm -hmm. Come to me, I will give you hope. Release that thing and gain faith. Release that thing and gain the love of me. Nobody can love you better than Jesus. Amen. You've tried all the rest. Seek him. Jesus told his disciples, he said, listen, as long as I'm with you, you don't have to fast. But when I'm gone, you've got to fast. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? We need Jesus, saints. Mm -hmm. we, need, see, we need Jesus, dear ones. We don't want the world overtaking us. Amen. This is not our home. Mm -hmm. We need Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is why we fast. Call somebody. Daniel chapter 2, verse 20. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and forever, for wisdom and might are his. Notice, again, I wanted to give you some discernment of times, as well as the word fast, and how you deal with everything, and why God is all in this, and why this year is pathetic for this church. Watch this. Notice Daniel praised God. He said, blessed be the name of God forever and forever for wisdom and might or his. Notice. And the changing, look at 21, and the changing, and the changing of the times and seasons. God is in the midst.
experience of the time and the season. How many remember, remember how cold it was last year? Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. I remember because we had a pipe burst Amen. and I had a whole lot of damage and the insurance company had to come. And it put me in a tizzy. And it was the, the sad part about it was it was right in the area of where I work, Amen. where I did my work. All the computers, I had to lift everything up when I saw the water coming. I just, I started to lift it up because I knew if I didn't, it was going to be much, much worse because I cannot afford to lose data and all those kinds of things. How the, Elder Carl knows exactly what I'm talking about. So I uplifted everything and I was on a corner and then when the, when the people came to, to, to fix it, they put a big hole in the wall, so now the cold air, the, the, the cold air is coming, and I still got, because I'm still getting calls. Customers in California don't care about my situation. Come on, son. It's of the winter. Mm -hmm. And it was sad. It was very depressing, but I held on. I didn't come to y'all with it. Amen. My wife had to hear a lot of it, but mm -hmm. nevertheless, I <laughs> still had to pray and see God about it. In other words, the season. God knows this. <clears throat> this year we got ahead of it. It's already January, already gone. It's not going to be as cold. And then when it comes, I love it about my wife. This is when I know God speaks to her. She's prophetic. She said, I'm praying. She even told uh, Brother Mac, she said, I'm praying that God don't let this weather come in. And and the, when it, if y'all notice it got cold a few days, and then it moved out, so the temperature started going up. I said, okay, praise God. Let me give you a hug. <laughs> you know, and, and, no, and this, uh, in January, we're almost gone. We're kicking it on out. And this fast, and notice our words. We're not in the same, not in the same season or times we were last year. And the reason we're not, because we're speaking. We're speaking all right. We're speaking the word of God. Jesus spoke to the storm. Amen. Peter didn't walk on water, saints. Peter walked on the word. Are you hearing me? So your words, when you are a son or child of God and you're walking under the anointing, you can speak it and it shall come to pass. Amen. You can speak those things not as they are, or, or, or as you perceive them, but as you would have them to be. Don't worry about it if it don't come right away. Don't stop speaking it. Amen. Don't stop believing. Yes. It will surely what tarry, but it will come to pass. Mm -hmm. God has again. He has a sense of humor, but he doesn't play. And of course, he fixed the situation. I'm back up. I'm doing fine. Got a new paint job. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. So I'm a lot better off than I was. Because I probably wouldn't have painted for another year or two. But I got a free paint job. You car. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. So I mean, uh, uh, blessings. Come on. Blessings. Somebody say blessings. blessings. Hallelujah. So you've got to understand, God does things for a reason. And maybe he wanted to see how I was going to handle, come on, somebody, that situation. Amen. Was I, what was I going to do? But notice he says, 21, and the changing, the changing, the times and season. He removed kings. Notice he's going to remove whoever that buffering you on your job. Watch him, watch him. He removes kings and set up, set up kings, and he gives wisdom unto the wise and the knowledge. Hallelujah. He gives knowledge to them that knoweth understanding. Let's get that one together. Look at 21. He changes the times. Notice the sermon of times. He changes those times and he changes the season. He removes people that are around you, that's buffering you. He removes those supervisors, those bosses that are not right to you. He removes kings and set it up kings. He'll change that one and put up a new one, or he may just promote you and put you there in their place. 
Then he says, also, he says, he gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know it. Know it. Somebody say understanding. understanding. You cannot get understanding until you understand who God is. Amen. Until you begin to seek God. Until you begin to speak aright. Knowledge comes. Knowledge is nothing, nothing but information. Wisdom is the application of the information. But understanding is getting a true revelation of God. Mm -hmm. Do you, you understanding where your power comes from? Mm -hmm. You're understanding that if you speak aright as God does, then your blessings, somebody say blessings, blessings, will appear. Notice again, knowledge is the information, and knowledge is not power in itself. It's what you do with the knowledge that gives you that power. But knowledge, once you get the information, then you use wisdom. Wisdom is the application of it. Are you hearing me? But understanding somebody is the layer in which you take the power of what God has given you and make it and turn it into something. Are you hearing me? It's like when you get a call about a job. Notice you've got the information. Then you've got to do what? You've got to do some work. Faith coming by what? Faith coming by hearing and reading the word of God. Work without what? Work without what? Faith is dead. So you have to do some what? Application. Notice. You, you, the interview, the application, and then the wisdom and the anointing of God, the understanding as to what you have to do. That should help somebody. Praise God. So this is what he says. Look at 22. He reveals the deep secret things because this is a discernment and an understanding of times. He reveals the deep and secret things. This is verse 22, Daniel chapter 2. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. When God created heaven and earth, he created what the word, we know the word, we know that. We know the word is above his name. Everybody know about John. He is the word, was the word, the word was God, is God. Then he said, he created light and darkness and the light. The darkness could not comprehend the light. You've got darkness over here, but then you've got light. And darkness scratching his head like I don't know who you are. I, I, what do you do? Mm -hmm. That's who you are in Jesus. When you walk in authority and you walk in a room with people, they don't know what to do with you mm -hmm. because you're walking in the light. Mm -hmm. Darkness cannot comprehend you when you're walking in your authority of God. So he says, Look at, look at, look at, look at, he says, I, he reveals the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and in the light. He does that. But the, let's wrap this up then. And I've talked about this before, so we're, we're actually, go to 1 Kings because this is so significant. This is going to bless you today. Thank you, Lord. As we close this. Hallelujah. This is that, this is almost like that last nugget. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, Sister Sharon. This is that last nugget. You're just in time. Amen. Amen. You're just in time. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. This is going to bless somebody. You don't want to miss this. Look at 1 Kings. You've heard me mention this before, but now you're ready to receive it in the revelation. You've heard me talk about how parables, how Jesus spoke the parables, but the multitudes couldn't receive the parables because they didn't understand it. But only those, only those disciples that knew how to decipher the code, that knew how to come unto the Lord, that knew how to approach Jesus in love and understanding and wisdom and knew how to approach him, those were the ones that received the rest of the revelation blessing. So look at 1 Kings chapter 3. Everybody's familiar with this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You heard me talk about it, but now we're going to bring it into your spirit as a revelation of blessing. Somebody say, I receive it, Pastor. I receive it. Verse 8, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 8. 1 Kings chapter 3. Let me let you get there because you need to take this one home. If you ain't there yet, just write it down. That's 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 8. 
And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen. Notice God has chosen you. And he has chosen you in the midst of a great people. You are God's son and daughter. You are servant. Yes, sir. He's talking to you. He is, Jimmy. You are his servant. Doesn't matter where you're at, where you came from. It don't matter. God don't care about that. But today, he says, you are my servant. If you recognize who he is and begin to walk in his statutes and begin to seek after his understanding, his knowledge, and his wisdom, he says that you are his servant. Watch what he says. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen. Oh, somebody. A great people. You are a great people. And you're in the midst that, that, that he says that cannot be numbered nor counted for the multitudes of them. But here's what he says. Look at verse 9. Give therefore, somebody say me. 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 Give therefore thy servant, give therefore the Lord thy son and thy daughter. There, give therefore thy Lord that's under the sound of my voice. Give therefore thy Lord that are least little ones. Give therefore thy Lord thy servant an understanding heart to judge notice notice Issachar Issachar said that this is the spirit where you not only discern times but you will tell others what to do you will prevent yourself from getting in a whole lot of trouble that the enemy was going to try to bring your way he says give therefore thy people an understanding heart to judge amen others that I may what discern between good and evil there you have it, right there. So therefore, you now have a new revelation because of Jesus. Jesus is a God that not only give a one chance, but he give multitudes of chances. Though your sins were scarlet, but today the Lord says they will be as white as snow because I'm changing your paradigm. I'm making you a brand new creature in Christ today because I'm giving you a revelation of discernment as to how to go through what you're going through and when he says give therefore me an understanding heart to judge others that might notice not only judge but have a discernment between good and evil that's what he's saying that's what he's saying so you have an understanding. You're not, you, you know what good and evil is. You know not to cheat the cash register just because she gives you some extra dollars. You know that's evil. You know that's bad. That's a discernment. That's an understanding. What about doing the right thing, somebody? What about saying, no, excuse me, dear lady. This is too much money. It's not mine. Doesn't matter if y'all making billions of dollars. This is not mine. I didn't come in here with this. I want to pay for what I pay for and get the product and service. I don't want to cheat nobody. I don't want to error because why the angel of the Lord watches over me. I want to do right. God says, let them do what is good and right before me. And then, somebody say the end. It will be well with me. That's the only time. So I don't care about what you're doing. Forget that. Repent. Doesn't matter about your past. I don't, I don't care whatever you did before you entered these gates, before you entered this door. It doesn't matter, God says. Just repent. Thank you, Lord. Because I'm fixing to give you a discernment of understanding and an understanding of times, understanding of seasons. I'm going to show you revelate to you how to speak the word of God in your life. Thank you, Lord. In your life. He says, an understanding of heart that I may discern evil, good and evil, for who is able to judge this great nation? Who is able to work in an environment and still not be sucked in by all the things that they would do to you and say to you are you able to walk in and walk out? Hallelujah. Blessing coming in and blessing going out. I don't matter. I don't care what they say or do. Oh, somebody. God has something for you today. God has brought you thus far not to leave you, but to raise you up. 
Call somebody. Come on, somebody. Calling you, but to raise you up. There is a greater, greater, greater. Somebody say greater. greater. Thing for me. Hallelujah. So don't don't think it's strange, dear one, because God, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or the seed begging for bread. God always, somebody say always, always. takes care of his own. And you are his. This is why he's telling you these things today. Yes. Oh, somebody. Let's finish. He says, and we asked this thing. He says he asked him to give him understanding. Saints, he asked him to give him, give him discernment so that he'll know how to, to, to walk in and walk out of the people. To be blessed coming in and blessed going out. And God, God honored him. He was pleased with what he asked for. Solomon didn't come by all of this by just being Solomon. Solomon came by this. Come on, somebody. Watch this. Solomon came by this by being a son of the king. Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody missed that. Are you not a son of the Lord? Are you not a son of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Who, what is Jesus? A king. Thank you, How did Solomon come by this? By being the son of a king. Thank you, David was the king. Jesus was what? The son of David, the son of the living God, the king. Now here you are today, a king and a queen. So you have a right to this. You have a right now to ask God for this. Not only a right, but a double anointing right of a discernment, an understanding of who he is and how to approach him. Because you're fasting and praying. You're sacrificing. You're bringing something unto the king. You're laying down something unto the king. Hannah understood one thing. She brought what she had to the king. She didn't have nothing to, to start with. She didn't have no children. She wanted an heir. She wanted a son. She didn't have nothing. And everybody ridiculed her about not having a son. But then she went to the king and asked, and God granted her request but guess what not only did he grant her request but he gave her a son and that son was the prophet to the king see you not only are supposed to be blessed but you're supposed to be a prophet and a prophetess to the king you are in the kingdom when you go with a request. Come on, somebody. You can't go unless you go spiritually. You have to go as a priest. And the priest does because you are a king. The king, the 24 elders, they lay down their crown, somebody. They throw it down and bow down to the most high, the only God, authority, most high God, who is the king of heaven and earth. But the 24 elders are king. They lay down their crowns and worship the Lord. Are you hearing? You? Know who you are. Speak it. He says. And God said unto him, because your speech and you asked this thing, you've only asked for understanding and discernment. That's all you ask for. And God says, because you asked just for that, Brother Curtis, he says, I'm going to give you more. <laughs> Anybody ever ask God for one thing and he gave you double? <laughs> <laughs> and in the midst of it, he blessed other folks just because of you. <laughs> it is our firm belief, and you cannot tell Pastor Valley and, 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 and myself otherwise, that the reason this hotel is blessed is because of Meaning us. Meaning you all. Because we pray when we come in here. Isn't that right, Brother Max? We send up many prayers. We understand some things. We know God. God will bless others because of you. This is why he tells you to stand in the gap for your family. You pray. Now, no matter what they do, you pray. You stand in the gap and believe. And God said unto him, because thou hast asked this thing, and has not asked for selfishness stuff, for foolishness. 
You asked for this. Nor has asked the life of thine enemies. In other words, you ain't going around talking about, kill them, Lord. Ah, oh, stamp them out. Stuff them. You know how you do. Sugar they tanks. Oh, let me just kick them. Let me kick them, Lord. I oh, let it be a quick murder on them. I take them out. Oh, ain't the Lord step on them. I cut them off. They hurt me. I don't like them no more. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. No, you need to what? Love thy enemy. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Bless those that curse you. Do good to those that hate you. Oh, somebody. Love your neighbor as thyself. Oh, somebody. Love the one next to you as thyself. Hallelujah. Come on now. This is what God wants you to do. He says, because you didn't ask for this, he says, neither has you asked for just riches for thyself. Selfishly. Oh, God, just bless me. Bless me with the Mercedes. Bless me, oh, God, I need it. Oh, it's all about me, Lord, but you know I pray, Lord. I pray, I fast, I fast. Just give it to me. All I need is just that, oh, give me that one job. Oh, Lord, give me that one, one thing. Oh, I need it, but you ain't prayed for nobody else. You ain't spoke, you ain't said, Lord, bless the church that I belong. Oh, Lord, bless, uh, you know, if nothing else, why don't you bless the little prayer that if you ain't got nothing else to say and ask God, why don't you bless the little prayer that we prayed when we was little? As I lay me down to sleep. Come on, somebody. Lord, I, I pray that my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, I pray the Lord, my soul to take. Now bless my mama and my daddy and my sister and my brother. Bless everybody in the whole world and bless poor me. Why can't you pray that? And that's all you got. You learned grandmama taught you that much. And now you all adult, you all you got to pray, you pray. Oh Lord, give me a car. Oh Lord, give me a job. And that's all you pray for. And God said, well, where's your, what, 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 what? you little selfish, whatever. You ain't broke no yoke. You ain't broke no heaven. You ain't broke the first, nor the second, nor the third. You ain't in nobody's courts. Ain't nobody hearing you. But everybody else's prayers are shooting by you like light speed. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting blessed, and you and you, you sit there, oh, bless me, will a call. Here comes John, right not only with a call. He got a blessed wife, a blessed house. He got a few million in his pocket, and you, oh, Lord, bless me with a little bill pay here. <laughs> Give me a utility bill, bless the Lord. And, you ain't, and, and then you ain't even asked him to forgive you for the foolishness, all the sins and stupid stuff that you've been doing. Amen. <laughs> well, God, but not only have they put up with me, they have received from you. God, for they do understand, for they are your people. Yes, God. And they do love you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. They do care about you, Father. So I pray for them. I pray, Lord God, that you put them at the forefront of your thinking, Lord God, and bless them this week to show them how much you love them, Lord God. And as they sacrifice with their fasting and praying, lift them up in it, Lord God. Touch them that they know, that they will know that they are doing it right. And God, cause them to speak the word only in their lives, in their family lives, and know that you are Jesus. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Let's get ready for our tithes and offering. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord God.